Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and tell you whether or not we think it's worth the cost. Oh, sh**. God. I fell. I fell down the hole. In this episode, we'll be playing Raft, the open ocean survival crafting game where you and your friends will have to strive to survive while constantly dealing with endless hunger, thirst, and of course the ultimate threat that every stranded sailor faces, sharks that love the taste of wood. Now the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Raft is currently in full release and available on PC for $20. So what exactly is the game? Well, Raft is exactly what the title says it is. It's an open world where you will find yourself stranded on a small raft and must use the few resources you can find to craft everything you will need to complete your journey and one day reach Utopia. Now before we get too far into the video, just know that we will be trying to prevent any major spoilers from being shown, but there will be some minor spoilers for the sake of giving the game a proper review. At the start of Raft, you will find yourself stranded on a small piece of wood that barely gives you any room to move around without plunging into the water. You'll have to use the plastic hook you start with in order to get more resources to both survive and upgrade the size and quality of your raft. At the start, one of your biggest concerns is most likely going to be just food and water. This is because Raft has a large focus on its survival elements rather than what other survival games do, which is just a large amount of running around and looking for resources. In Raft, you will find that right from the start, there's almost never any downtime and never enough time for you to complete all the things that you need to do. This is because things like your hunger and thirst will drop rather quickly when compared to other survival games. To give you an idea, on our very first attempt at the game, we had passed out due to dehydration and died in something like 5 or 10 minutes. The next time around, we of course knew to focus much more on our bodily needs rather than simply expanding and giving ourselves more space to work with. However, if you spend too much time focusing on your bodily needs and you don't expand your boat, you will start to have more trouble when the shark comes along and starts to tear apart your raft. In order to deal with that shark, you will have to engage with the game's combat system. Raft's combat is rather simplistic in the sense that it basically boils down to either make a sharp tool and hit something with it or just shoot something with a crude bow and arrow. Most enemies you will encounter are rather easy to fight as their mechanics in AI are extremely simplistic and arguably kind of stupid. To give you a couple examples, the shark simply needs to be hit two to three times to make it go away and stop biting your raft. Whereas to deal with the large rats, all you need to do is simply walk back and forth between your attacks. Overall though, you will eventually get better weapons to make combat easier as you progress throughout the game. The progression of raft is focused primarily on three things your research, the story which will contain special blueprints, and upgrading your raft. Each of these three progression mechanics are going to be your long-term goals within the game. At the start, you will probably focus on unlocking all the craftable items you can in the research bench. Once you've done that, you may find yourself wondering how else you can improve your raft since most of the items in the research bench are rather primitive. Well, this is where the story progression comes in, as that is where you're going to find the more advanced blueprints for things like engines, steering wheels, trash compactors, and much more. The story in Raft isn't by any means the most exhilarating or innovative thing you're going to find. While the storytelling is at least voice acted now, it still just doesn't really sell that epic sense of an adventure. I won't spoil anything here because there are still a couple of exciting moments for you to find, but just know that there really isn't much to write home about. The story does contain quite a few puzzles and even a few boss fights though that can be quite exciting. The puzzles are simple enough to make you have to sit and think about them for a few minutes before being able to solve them, but not so hard that it felt like you needed to Google every single one of them. Of course, if you ever do get stuck, you can always trust your friendly neighborhood Google to give you a helping hand, but it's not really necessary in the vast majority of cases. The boss fights on the other hand, I would say were rather lackluster, but again, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll just leave it at that. Now before we move into the pros and cons, we would like to mention that if you hit the join button just below this video, you can get some perks and help support this channel as well. If you do decide to support us, you can do so for less than the price of a microtransaction in your favorite demon slaying mobile game. In all seriousness though, 
Any support makes a huge difference in the time and quality that we're able to put into our videos. And once again, to do this, just check out the join button down below. With that being said, first up for the pros is the fact that there was just never a dull moment. Even after we were hours into the game and had several items to reduce the amount of manual labor required, we still felt that there was more than enough to do, but never enough time to do it all. There was always a shark attacking your boat, a bird stealing your crops, or the constant feeling that you needed to gather more resources. Next up for the pros is that the survival elements of Raft always felt like they constantly needed to be addressed. This gives the game a sense of actually being about your survival and just simply staying alive. This means that hunger and thirst will be something that you need to deal with all the way until you reach Utopia. Another pro is that the sense of progression on your raft felt satisfying and rewarding. Every time you added a new furnace, crop plot, engine, sails, or even a foundation, it always felt like you had accomplished something meaningful and impactful to your gameplay. And lastly for the pros is that Raft's soundtrack is peaceful and really helps to set the tone of the game as you float across the vast ocean. The music always seems to fit the setting whether you're exploring a new island, fighting a boss, or even just simply drifting along in the open sea. Now for the cons. The first con I had for you today is that the game just had some bugs. These bugs weren't anything too game breaking or anything like that. It was mostly things like seeing through walls or kind of glitching around. But at the end of the day, they are noticeable and they will kind of break that sense of an immersion. We did die once to one of these bugs, but just keep in mind, it's usually not game breaking or anything too intolerable. So it is something you can deal with. It's just rather annoying. Next is that the combat was just a bit jank. It really wasn't anything too good or special. It really just boiled down to, hey, I have a sharp stick, I'm going to poke you, or hey, I have a little bit of a bow, I'm going to hit you from range. I really wish it was better, but at the end of the day, the combat was extremely simplistic. I would love to have seen something like, hey, you know, maybe you have a combo attack, don't need anything crazy like a fighting game but just something more than left click, poke it with a spear. And lastly for the cons is that the end game just really isn't that fun unless you really, really enjoy just upgrading your raft to become some kind of mega boat. It's not that hard to actually do and really just starts to feel like a grind. I really wish that there was more to the end game and there is a couple of things in there, but nothing that's going to keep your attention for long. So now it's time for the rating for the game. And when we rate games, we wanna get one hour of enjoyment out of every $1 that we spend on the game. So for this game in particular in Raft, we would wanna get roughly 20 hours of enjoyment out of the $20 that we spent. And after putting well over 24 played hours into this game, we give it. Eight out of 10 potatoes. Raft was a relaxing experience, yet also an extremely stressful one all at the same time due to the nature of the beautiful ocean setting while also trying to make sure you have enough resources to keep hunger, thirst, and the shark at bay. This sense of calm yet panic is something that we experienced throughout the entirety of our time with Raft, and it helped to set the tone for the story that the game brings to the table. It's important to note that Raft felt a bit more like a story game than it did a survival game, as once you have completed the story or have gotten to a certain level of progression, the survival elements will start to lose their impact on you. With all that being said, although Raft does have some issues with bugs and a lack of endgame content, we still feel that Raft is definitely worth the cost. Before you guys go, thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more survival game content. I just want to shout out Jonathan S. and Jim Phillips. Thank you guys so much for being members. We couldn't do this without you. And also a shout out to all of our new subscribers here on screen. Now don't forget to check out all of our links in the description below for things like our music library and Epic Games Creator Code, as these are just ways for you to help support the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching again, and we'll see you next time.